Um, hello, everyone. Uh, we thought it could be useful to talk about some common misconceptions about ultra-wideband. Um, those are common in, in the industry, and they come from the long history of radio technologies and the different development speeds at which those various technologies came into the market. So one of them, one common misconception is that ultra-wideband range is very limited. And you know, to look at ultra-wideband in comparison to the other technologies like Wi-Fi and BLE, they are all what we would call a mid-range technology. So they are um, thought to be used in an indoor type of environment. So they are pretty much designed to achieve the same type uh, of range. Um, in the frequency space, ultra-wideband operates a little bit higher than Wi-Fi and higher than BLE. Um, but, you know, it uses um, a, a larger spectrum. Um, and that makes that you could get about the same range with ultra-wideband as you would get with the other one, say some around, something around 100 meters or so. Another misconception I've heard is, uh, oh, ultra-wideband is a power hog. It's going to consume a lot of power. Um, but, you know, unlike uh, Bluetooth or uh, Wi-Fi, ultra-wideband is what we call an impulse radio. And what we call impulse radio is that it sends small pulses. And that makes it very interesting for the types of applications where most people use ultra-wideband, which is ranging, because what you want to be able to do is to get an extra signal at an exact moment. And a pulse there is very efficient. And a pulse consumes very little amount of energy. Another uh, common misconception I've heard is, um, oh, ultra-wideband is a niche technology. Not everybody uses it. And, you know, that used to be true when ultra-wideband first started, maybe 15 years ago. Uh, but since then, you know, large companies like Samsung, Apple, BMW uh, have integrated ultra-wideband into their systems. And the impact of these large companies on the um, general industry, you know, cannot be uh, um, uh, neglected. And the application of ultra-wideband has also expanded. It's not just about ranging an indoor location, it's about many extensions of that application, such as asset tracking, uh, positioning in space to know where your, your speakers are, uh, payment system, you know, contactless payment system, e-lock, smart home, hotel access to your rooms, all these applications have developed as well that make that today ultra-wideband has, you know, become uh, entering the main range of the radio technology applications. Another misconception is that Ultra-wideband is a premium product. It is expensive. But here again, it's a, probably a historical misconception. Ultra-wideband can scale very large. Now, it is true that uh, ultra-wideband has been uh, developed a little bit later uh, than a Wi-Fi or BLE, you know, a few years after. So although the die and the chipsets, you know, the making of those use about the same types of technology and therefore have about the same cost, Ultra-wideband having started later is still a little bit earlier in the market, and therefore, you know, the cost of an ultra-wideband chipset today might be a little bit higher uh, than the cost of a BLE or Wi-Fi chipset. But that difference is likely not to stand for long as, you know, the production keeps increasing and ultra-wideband is already entering uh, the mass market technology and the mass market pricing. Another misconception I've heard is, uh, you know, Location tracking wise, you can use ultra wideband, but you can also be on your Wi Fi. The results and the accuracy are going to be about the same. So, this is couldn't be farther from the truth, in fact, because um, you have three types of technology you can use uh, for location tracking. One is signal strength, RSSI, receive signal strength indicator, as we say. And that is basically measuring the signal of a, of a sender and deducing from that signal strength how far the sender is uh, from you. That is what uh, BLE and Wi-Fi has been using for, you know, 20 years for Wi-Fi and 10 years for, for BLE. As the environments change from one building to the other, the accuracy you can get with that structure is roughly around, you know, 7 to 10 meters. Then you can use uh, angle technology where you measure where the, uh, 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 the signal comes from. And then by doing some smart triangulation, you can deduce where you are compared to some uh, system, sending system, and therefore where you are uh, in space. Here, you, know, you can get some accuracy around 2 to 5 meters. We have seen accuracy in BLE below 1 meter. However, um, the last technique is what we call time of flight which you simply measure the time of travel, you know, at the speed of light uh, of the signal from one sender to the receiver. 
This is what Arch Wideband uh, is using. This is what Wi-Fi has started using just a couple of years ago. And here, uh, the main accuracy will depend on how wide your signal is, what's the frequency width of your, of your signal. And Arch Wideband is the largest of all, with 500 megahertz. And that makes that the accuracy you can get with this type of light technology is within a range of a few centimeters. By comparison with Wi-Fi, again, in good controlled environments, um, with the time of flight technology that is appearing in Wi-Fi, you can get somewhere around one meter or two meters. So definitely ultra-wideband here has a clear advantage in terms of accuracy.